I jump into development straight away. I want these two tools uh, to be to make them available for you to play with. So we have the webcam eye tracker. It kind of works. Yes, I'm pretty sure it was uh, running a bit better. So obviously the eyes are overlaid. Yes, it was slightly less uh, obvious. Uh, okay, so we have the code. We it's uh, just under four thousand tokens. Place that in. We go over it in a sec. Oh, yes, there's uh, HTML. Where is it? We want to publish it today as a Flask application. I think it's ready. Or well, let me know if you think it's not ready. Um, so we have this. Uh, the Flask application is actually not do anything. There's nothing on the server. So the the footage, whatever, and the processing, it's all happening front end. Well, and that's also why it's a bit uh, laggy like that. Unless uh, I'm doing something else as well. Yeah, this Firefox uh, window taking more resources than uh, me streaming onto four different platforms. So I have the Flask application. Uh, later, if needed, we can implement stuff on the server as well. For now, we don't actually need it. We have this HTML, obviously. It will need a longer description there of what uh, what's going on. Might actually do it straight away. Have a CSS, main JavaScript. What's the main JavaScript doing? Yeah, utilizes the view stream, blah, blah. They're drawing all this stuff. Eye detection, pupil tracking. So we have a face detection uh, model. Face model, uh, we're using Blaze face. Yeah, we'll have that all in the description. Yeah, can we update the description at the bottom of the HTML file? Uh, we need to be more comprehensive and uh, reference the libraries that are being used for this tool. Obviously, there's no uh, data. The data is your face. Drawing utilities should be fine. Video stream, yeah, it's short file. Now, we have this, this File uh, my app WSGI, we need it for the Flask application to work. We have all the libraries, blah, blah, blah. and that's the structure of the files and folders. I think it's correct. And we should somewhere have a description of how, of how to publish a Flask application. We already have, uh, I think, 12 of them running on the website. Yeah, if you haven't checked the website, please go uh, do so. There's a lot of interesting tools and don't forget to provide your feedback. Today we will be publishing these two additional ones. There's not enough gap there, isn't there? Okay, we had a, a description somewhere. So the last uh, one we had is this... Uh, EG to music converter. Uh, let's look at it quickly because in its info, yeah, it will have a description of how to add a Flask application. Yeah, we need to mo uh, modify this uh, configuration. Apache, we're using an Apache server. Need to change this configuration file. And uh, might do it on another screen quickly shouldn't be anything too sensitive in there uh, but i don't think it's very interesting anyway might actually pop it into a uh, gpt as well yeah so updating this uh, description at the bottom of the page and hopefully this to both of these tools the cardio quest bot and the webcam eye tracker will be available for you to play with just do some final testing yeah so the problem one obvious issue with it is well the eyes are jumpy like that but it's to do with your gpu and stuff i suspect firefox is currently not the 
fully utilizing the GPU or something. I have to check. Yeah, so the eyes will be jumpy like that. I can split the view. I don't know if it's uh, useful or not. Yeah, that stuff is not great. And the darkness threshold, so it's finding the... It's turning the eyes into grayscale and finding the darker uh, pixels within the eye. And this threshold, as you can tell, is is more sensitive, so you have uh, no detections uh, happening, but it's uh, more accurate in terms of the pupil detection. If you increase the darkness threshold, it potentially makes more mistakes. Yeah, so here it's kind of moving a bit upwards. And yes, we don't yet have the uh, eye blinks. Well, because we actually won't be able to have the eye blinks because when we when we blink, the pupil is still being detected because it's picking up uh, the dark bit of the iris. So yeah, good luck with you know trying to yeah we should have had another like circle a uh, circle transform but we haven't uh, implemented it because it's already quite heavy for it's all happening in the front uh, uh, front end so all in the JavaScript alone yes we have more description in there because it's also all uh, front-end, you're just able to get the source code. It's all in uh, JavaScript on the page. And uh, there's no back-end, so... Yeah, we do have a disclaimer somewhere that uh, GPT or, or whatever GitHub Copilot as well are being extensively used. Didn't ask for a description, it's just that uh, no, the, tool, the tool is not responsible. The creator <laughs> okay obviously still it's it's interesting because the uh, gpt4 is much uh, better at uh, writing this stuff well i must have uh, didn't uh, make it clear uh, can we add a disclaimer that this tool was developed using gpt4 and github copilot so it's insisting on uh, adding how great it is and by the way, yeah, when I when I use the text to speech in my live streams, yeah, Facebook was complaining about it. It's actually labeled them as copyrighted material and uh, like limited the video or something. I wanted to keep the video on Facebook as well as I do on YouTube. YouTube doesn't do it, um, but yes, maybe it's not a bad idea to um, not uh, use those. I'll be using them uh, myself when reading because that's just how I read. I can't read anything on the screen. Well, just stuff up my eyes. You can probably tell with my eye tracking. You can apply it to somebody else's video to see if they are reading a script or not. Probably not, but most people do. And no, I don't have any any CEO or anyone talking into my ear it's just checking the sound quality yeah i don't know I was <laughs> insisting on uh, saying how great it is that you didn't ask for it right well it says um, it's important to note that the final design decision code validation and quality assurance were carried out by human developers to ensure their reliability and integrity of this <laughs> uh it's uh yeah must have picked it up already and it's the training data set people already making those uh, disclaimers somewhere might keep it as it is for now we currently more care about the functionality of this thing as you can tell it's not a uh, great but the best thing about it it's all uh, front end so your data your face is not being uploaded to the cloud so it's probably a huge advantage but then yes it relies on your uh, graphic um, abilities of your machine and browser right we wanted to go okay can you explain this uh, file uh, count how many flask 
applications we already have uh, published um, I'm using Apache server on Ubuntu and we would like to add uh, more Flask applications using the following file with the first one it's called uh, editor so obviously that one has uh, has my microphone going but the window is horrendous it's only 2.5k tokens yeah i have the server name ssl certificate yeah we have the mod spelling so if you misspell um, a name it's not the one i wanted to so if you misspell well, that won't do it because that's too much of a misspelling but uh, for example it shouldn't be case sensitive that works static files configuration yeah so something about um, the static files uh, served uh, for each uh, flask application because apparently flask doesn't serve static files in production environment so we have to specify where the static files are is that what's going on right for the all 12 but uh, it says uh, 11 uh, flask applications I'm sure there are 12 there's inverse f noise eg generator image uh, compression uh, eg music spectrogram there should be 12 of them why did it say 11 right so we're gonna add two more um this webcam and the cardio quest but another thing we want to limit the usage on the server are you sure there are 11 flask application currently deployed not more than that uh, also how do we limit um, the amount of resources being used for each application uh, we would like to control that to a larger extent uh, this is primarily uh, because on Ubuntu in Linux I cannot control how fast the fans are running so even if I uh, have the performance at the power saver the fans are still uh, quite uh, noisy uh, especially at night when uh, nothing else is happening so I would like to limit the amount of uh, CPU, GPU etc that is being used for each uh, application yeah, you're right I count it's hard to count to 12 <laughs> when you're a robot yeah there's uh, inverse uh, noise eg generator image compression to coherence to ecg generator feature extractor yeah so there's actually 12 not 11. okay the limiting resources yeah so currently we're defining the number of threads to be two that's the default option uh, we also might limit the processes but i don't think that will do it i don't think that um, adding the processes i think there is only one used at a time um, anyway so that might uh, not uh, do the trick i can essentially control uh, make sure the fans have like 10 uh, uh, well they're quite quiet but they're still noisy when they all uh, turn on to give our fans in this machine i would like the cpu usage not to go over a certain percentage is it uh, possible to do you can do time limit the apache configuration file so this is a global setting not specific to each flask application yeah because um, once changing those settings we'll have to uh, test uh, each uh, flask application see if it's still uh, functioning okay this is a jumping business well, the cameras is the camera is being funny 
So Apache doesn't directly allow setting the memory limit for each application. That's unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> suggesting to use a Docker. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Can you give a quick uh, a overview of the difference between uh, Docker and the uh, Flask uh, application on uh, Apache? So we're testing these two applications. We want to release them into the wild. So what this one is, uh, the video footage is jumpy like that. It's not anymore, it's better now. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, because I'm using uh, Firefox in this case, everything will highly depend on your machine and browser. Just checking my CPU usage. Yeah, so this process is in threads. Let's see. So if I'm using my my own thing, yes, yeah, some of them are much uh, uh, heavier than uh, others. The update interval to one second, shut that point, yeah, make it 80 or something. Yes, yeah, so you can tell uh, which one. Yes, yeah, so obviously, if I load a blog or something, it just gets uh, loaded once. There's nothing going on, that's fine. If I add, say, this uh, feature extraction, yeah, it's also doing bugger all. But if I load this uh, EG noise removal, yeah, you can see usage. Yeah, so it's, it's obviously using just one uh, CPU. You tell, especially when uh, reducing the window size. No, it's actually potentially using more than one CPU. I don't know what it's doing. Yeah, they all increase. That shouldn't be the case. Well, the the point for me that I'm uh, using both, uh, so some of the CPU usage will be for the browser. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that blue one that's uh, using the the actual tool. Oh no, probably the blue one's doing something else. Anyway, yeah, it's hard to to measure these things. Yes, we can uh, set the CPU time limit, but it's global, not specific to each uh, Flask application. But we can limit uh, each uh, request. Not sure how well that will work. Yeah, might just yeah limit the the fan noise of my machine. It's not directly related to the Flask. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is when nothing else is uh, going on. Currently, obviously, it's hard for me to measure because there's all this, uh, well, because I'm streaming from the same uh, machine. Yes, yeah, so overall system load. Yeah, we might try some of those uh, CPU frequency scaling tools. Uh, but yeah, we'll do it offline. Yeah, we might actually reduce uh, the number of threads for each application to one. So say the spectrogram definitely needs some uh, limiting of uh, resources. Uh, we potentially can do it just by uh, reducing the window size as well. Yeah, the increasing the window size is really uh, driving a uh, CPU usage up. Yeah, we limit the uh, for the spectrogram a number of threads and number of processes to one. And does it mean that only one person at a time could uh, use the app? Yeah, there's essentially yeah, there's essentially not enough um, control of our CPU usage. Unfortunately, I might use the uh, other um, tools for limiting the CPU. Yeah, it became super slow. It must be because I'm running both of these uh, uh, applications at the same time. Why the bot keeps uh, making mistakes? Yeah, obviously. So you, the idea behind this tool is that if you reduce the noise, the bot uh, is uh, performing better but we want to see how it's doing with this uh, average uh, noise level well average in this case you could always uh, reduce it but i mean the human probably could still 
uh, determine which ECG is normal, which one's abnormal. Yeah, now the bot is doing better, at, and, and I already did three misses. Wasn't paying attention. Problem is that uh, with this display, it doesn't scale to the screen, the that canvas. I might need to uh, fix it somehow. Comparing Docker to traditional Flask application. Okay, so suppose it has a finer control over resource allocation. It can port it. Well, currently I don't see a reason for me to port it. I know Flask is uh, better at uh, prototyping stuff. I think it will be much harder setting up a, a Docker. Yeah, I don't know why. I would need to deploy multiple instances of the application. I haven't actually tested how many uh, users can access the Flask application at once. Probably not uh, too many. Yeah, so Docker will uh, is more complex to set up. Right, so currently, yes, we are running directly on the server operating system. Well, I mean, this uh, machine is uh, dedicated uh, for uh, doing so. Yeah, so we are currently running with no vir virtualization. So that might, it's simpler, uh, potentially faster as well. What is it suggesting to rebuild the whole uh, server hardware or something? Uh, that's not uh, happening. Let's get back to this quickly. So the eye tracker has this WSGI file. It's called my app. And we need to add another entry here. And it's hard to edit those with the eye tracker the folder the folder is also called the eye track let's actually open it quickly in the uh, binary chaos uh, uh, yeah need to replace all those eye track eye track eye track Static folder, does it have a static folder? Yes, okay. Then we also have the uh, cardio quest port, right? So we have the eye tracker and a cardio quest port. Okay, let's try that for the spectrogram. Yeah, I'll have to deploy, deploy, deploy. Let me sort out errors and things uh, later Does the EEG music have an info file yeah we need to do a config test because we changed the configuration file right so the configuration file is okay right what do we need to do next is do we just deploy should we do it one by one? Just do them all together. Obviously, the, the site will be down for a short time. Let's just do everything at once. It's a, always a, a scary moment, isn't it? Yep, the site is down. Site is back on. And there's a couple of things. First, let's check if the spectrogram. Uh, makes any difference in terms of uh, usage it's not any faster if anything it's slower well we expect it to be slower because we gave it less uh, resources yeah i think it does use less resources we'll see if the server is a bit quieter okay now we have these two tools let's see if they're working at all so that's called your quest port and you should be able to access it by going to the page fingers crossed no oh, pow. but the page is loading probably giving an error it's a loading failed of uh, waveform js why it's a bit odd 
Let's try the other one. I trick it. Well, we have to turn this one off for a sec. So that one seemed to work. Let's see if the I mean the app is working. Why on earth? Yeah, I know what the problem is. In the in a HTML. It's the problem with the HTML. So we just have uh, so this is on the site. Go uh, check it out all by yourself. Pop it in the the chat. The problem is, well, there's quite a few. There are quite a few. This one we know how to solve at least. Yeah, if we go to the whole uh, project thing, okay, the eye tracker. The HTML needs some stuff. Let's pop it from uh, the music generator. That's the last working tool we had. Static no a template it's index HTML. Yeah, we want what do we want? Yeah, we want everything up to this point. This will be another a header yeah don't like the titles at the top anyway or should i leave it i don't remember how it is how it is like in other tools but we definitely need uh, those two scripts we might not need lotly for this and yeah we'll have to redeploy after making these changes popping ads onto it straight away <laughs> Or waiting a bit. Now I'm thinking there's a problem with loading JavaScript on the other application. I need to turn it into a module. I don't know. We'll sort it out and say hopefully the GPT-4 can just sort it out for us. This tool isn't it supposed to be loading on the ah yeah after ten uh, seconds. Go at the bottom of the page. Yes, we the website is monetized, so I think I need to. I keep I kept apologizing for it. I don't know why, but uh, yes, it, this uh, website is uh, free, but it does run uh, ads advertisement. Hopefully, you get uh, relevant um, advertisement for your liking yeah you can see how the darkness threshold it uh, changes the detection so it becomes less uh, accurate when the threshold is increased but then it will but now with a low this is by the way 50 it's going from uh, 50 to like 150 or something but when it's uh, a low threshold on this scale that's 50 there um, well then it becomes more sensitive to you know to stuff and then it can detect the pupil whereas over here it can better detect it but it's a bit off as you can tell i don't know so normally yeah there is some sort of default uh, value in the uh, in the middle somewhere in the middle right the other thing is we need the we have two style uh, CSS, one for the tool and one for the whole project. Let's see if it's implemented correctly. Yeah, this one is for the whole project. I'm sure we had another call for it in the bottom. We don't actually need it. Yeah, it's in a static folder. That should be fine. We'll sort it out later. And the other tool, this one, is not loading uh, it's not loading correctly it's not loading it's giving me an error we'll sort that error in a second let's solve one problem at a time let's deploy redeploy now we have the structure for the website Put description the uh, disclaimer that we use uh, GPT-4 actually need it in uh, checking it in Chrome 
let's use Chrome instead. There, add didn't load. There's some errors, are there? The ads are meant to be loading only after 10 seconds. And this must be this uh, warnings. Why is it funny like that? Why the messages? Someone must be screaming at me at the moment. But why the messages are not loading properly? Oh, get it. Getting tube. Tube body ads. I'm not actually using it. It's probably targeting me. Hopefully get more relevant ads. Yeah, it's always nice to see a university or some uh, medical device. Yeah, ultrasound machine friendly experts. I'm not allowed to click on it, so you have to do it for me. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> we have to improve the website anyway. But if you have, uh, if you tried the uh, bodycales.com and you have any feedback, um, critical is good so we can actually uh, make uh, changes probably straight away that would be nice wouldn't it yes yeah, so on the page we already have the the game that you can play that's not against the machine that's just against uh, yourself which is also a lot of fun but not as fun as when this tool actually works so why the errors are not properly displayed network yeah i think you know what the problem might be would be this meant to be accessible through the flask application pretty sure yeah let's start another gpt4 wasting time we are just wasting time we can try github copilot as well for github copilot we actually have to use uh, a smaller uh, just open the folder in a separate uh, visual studio code there would be also an error file from for the flask application itself yeah, I know what the problem might be is the fact that uh, it will run uh, locally okay, I think. But when running on the server, okay. However, yeah, these two JavaScript files are nowhere to be found. Well, I mean, they're there. The Flask application, uh, when running on this. Um, yeah, on the server. Okay, so you should uh, know what to do and how to fix it. We need to fix the code. Um, do we also need to share? Yeah, we also have that um, um, Apache configuration file. I think that should be plenty. Let's see what it says. Clear. Yes, what are the issues that are not being correctly served? These two files. A check. Yeah, we have a folder static. That is the case. That should be fine, isn't it? But for the eye tracker, we have the alias. Yeah, we have eye track, a cardio quest bot. It's like a case sensitive or something now. Yeah, we have cardio quest bot bot as a my app in the static directory copy a relative path to the static directory yeah it looks legit what's the problem no oh, this two files should be okay a kind of quest bot alias yeah this is exactly what i have right this one is probably what the problem actually is so if that works, we have the game logic JS um, uh, folder. We can do GPT 3.5. It should be a simple. Yeah, quite a lot of quite a bit of uh, errors in there. What the GPT 4 suggested as well. So must be correct. It's what I originally had. 
Yeah, permissions should be okay. Let's see if it's still uh, running uh, locally. No, now I'm getting a 404. I suspect if I cannot run this locally, um, it actually will run on the server. Ideally, uh, with this change, it uh, now giving me an error when trying to run locally. Can I solve this uh, so that it will run uh, locally and on the server with no errors? We did do this in the past. I forgot how it was done. Check uh, one of our other applications. We used the following instead. Would this be better to use? Yep. Right, so this should work both in development and production environment. It's a big promise. Right, so it's running locally, okay. That's good. Now we need to deploy it again. We make changes to the Apache configuration file. No, it works. It will be down again. Get back, back online. It's actually working. The Python code is not running. I suspect it's actually a problem with the Python. Yeah, this one locally is working okay. Locally it's working. It's error. Pretty sure it's the Python code, but then it's uh, saying game logic. Yeah, happy to share the game logic. Yeah, I remember facing this type of errors before. It's uh, this, yes, might be a permission issue. Now, course should be fine. Yeah, something to do with the configuration of the folders. Yeah, I remember solving something similar before. Yeah, now flask. Hey, we need to make sure the folders are accessible both. Uh, so currently it's running okay locally. And I'm still getting the same uh, error when uh, running on the server. Do we need to check when uh, running on the server or not and adjust the folders uh, accordingly? Yep. Yeah, we're still having the same problem. The application is working locally fine, working okay, but on the server, I still get errors. Yeah, if I do that, I suspect it will stop working um, locally and will start working on the server. So we need like an adaptive check. Uh, we need to check if this uh, request is being done uh, locally uh, or the server as yeah, suspect now it won't run uh, locally anymore yeah getting a 404 yes yeah, so i'm getting the same uh, problem yeah we need to use this line if you're running server locally and use this line if you're running the server on heroku no we're not using heroku no yeah <laughs> apache yeah, if it's working uh, live, uh, we might as well uh, just keep it as is. Its site will be down for a second. Uh, okay, that's not cool. Okay, same error. This error message is all wrong. Yeah, it's otherwise way for change the Flask application. What did I change? I just changed the a game logic when it's okay yeah, this url should be accessible ah. okay do i need to change the folders names uh, in the flask application as well i did uh, add the project directory in javascript do i need to do in, in uh, the Python code as well. Problem still persists. It's working locally. The, the fuzzy logic, the backend, is not working uh, 
uh, when running on a server. That's not good. Okay, let's redeploy. Because we made a few changes, maybe logging stuff and something else. Uh, we also changed the in my app. Change that as well. Not sure if um, yeah, it's something with the folder. Silly folder, it can't find the folder. Let's redeploy quickly. Of course, need the password because a server is super secure. Through the roof secure. Should be back live. Got your quest. Is working. Okay, we have to. <laughs> uh, well, that doesn't matter now because it is uh, working okay. Uh, right. Yeah, deploying Flask applications. Okay, we do a quick summary. We don't need the bot for this. The bots are super slow and uh, just annoying. So we have this two new Flask application that we will be sharing on. I don't know why one of my cameras is like flickering like that. A bit odd. You can do web type tracking. Actually, use that the uh, other camera instead, but we need to keep this uh, window intact because, yeah, so publishing this to Flask application, there's no, right, are they still working locally? Yeah, they should be working in a local environment for me as well, if we want to do any more changes testing uh, later on, so it's working fine, we can close that, have to put the server still working yes you can change your noise level and uh, in this application you're competing against the robot in terms of trying to identify normal and abnormal ECG waveforms just checking the chat there's no yeah those sessions meant to be interactive by the way so if you have any Comments, suggestions, requests, complaints, please do share them ideally during one of those live streams because I can actually do something about it in real time. Okay, next time we deploy, get rid of that uh, uh, URL uh, logging. We don't need it anymore. Oops. Because it's working correctly. Yeah, we have this adaptive thing that will uh, actually check if we are in a production or development. And then, uh, yeah, because we need to change the URL accordingly. Uh, what else did we change? Yeah, we have to specify. I think that's what solved, solved it, but I'm not sure which one was it. Anyway, I'm just happy that it's uh, it's working. Don't touch it. What is it? First rule of engineering. We have a summary there at the bottom. Uh, okay, the application is now working. We would like an image um, that we can use it as a thumbnail on the landing page uh, for this application. Uh, don't worry about text. So no text, just image alone which one yep we will generate the same one uh, for the eye tracking business still we use something legit I have to use my face for that yeah, it's the web tracking yeah just ask for a relevant image yeah so it's generating this generic crap uh, sorry <laughs> yeah don't worry about it. <laughs> let's just <laughs> just generate our own that's fine because it's supposed to yeah no it's just meant to be eye tracking yeah it's always stuffing up the text of course yeah no, don't worry about it yeah because we had the original one uh, this one is only for human alone to play and it has no uh, noise uh, options 
whereas this one has a back end uh, that uh, that's the robot playing the game so you'll be competing against the bot don't worry about the bot um, always being uh, so it's making decision much fast much uh, faster i mean should worry about it but as in don't worry about it too much well eventually robots are taking over so that's what i'm saying don't just don't worry about it <laughs> let it uh, yeah so the bot is already uh, doing better not doing mistakes the human aka me is uh, making mistakes already at least one uh, abnormal waveform it's becoming faster and slower so it's essentially helping the human the bot doesn't care it makes a decision uh, immediately but as yeah, so you can tell even with noise the bot is doing quite well you can go try this application yourself let me know how you how you went the flask application currently is not doing anything for for this uh, no it's not that one it's uh, ah no sorry it does but um, it's not sending any any data so i'm not logging anything at the moment there's no like leaderboard or anything like that i mean yeah it's like it's bad enough that you have to compete against the uh, robots so it might uh, not uh, turn it into more of a competition obviously you know if you're positively thinking about it it's uh, meant to be a collaboration not a competition so the bot is giving you an abnormality score and it's uh, helping you obviously you are a ecg expert and it will be helping you make a decision and it will give you essentially the probability of like how certain it is in uh, in its uh, decision but yes the robot is also making a decision so the fact it's uh, based on fuzzy logic system you can read about it more over there yeah once this becomes faster as well yeah that's another a uh, lose lose for the human and uh, this application also allows you to see how better or worse the robot's performance is when the noise is increased so now it will probably start making mistakes they particularly expect it to label a uh, normal ecg with abnormal so this do yeah you can see the false alarm rate uh, starts going up because it's essentially labeling everything as uh, abnormal because the subnormality score is too high and that's uh, due to the noise so good luck to us all playing against against robots would be a lot of fun poor players will have two extra uh, tools there just get some sort of get some sort of image why did showing the emf and uh, stuff yeah i don't know what the resolution is like should do a funny image for the uh, that's not a good one is it sec to bold my well that game quickly pop in a few uh, options for us to use yeah those images are low res the camera is low res <laughs> uh, that's not good is it it obviously needs more uh, testing i'm sure if i reduce the threshold no yeah it's a problem yeah, it's finding the darker uh, region of the eye i think that the minimum for the threshold is 50 anyway it's not finding the other eye it's a bit of a problem is it oops yeah and when the threshold is up is off i don't know what's up i can swear it was working better before i guess that's the point of it uh, this one is a bit better i don't know why it would be even like the position of stuff on my screen uh, uh, provides a uh, different uh, ambient light conditions yeah so you can correct for it's doing more errors as in uh, no well right uh, now one eye is better the other one is off they uh, might need those uh, 
the parameters to be adjusted for each eye. I don't know if my eyes are different or or what. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. I might use one of those. So somehow with the parameters and certain specific light conditions, you should be able to do better. If I turn on the light. Yeah, now it's better. Yeah, so it depends how much uh, ambient light you have. Anyway, one one of them should be fine. Got like eight minutes before LinkedIn will drop us out. Just trying to see if uh, more ambient light into the room will uh, make it better. Oops, sorry, my microphone was muted. We got like four minutes to publish this tool. We already published it, so if you're watching the streams, those are the two links. Uh, go check them out. Put it on the YouTube chat, it's the main one. And I'm just saying I need to actually publish them on the front page of my website. To do that, I need some sort of uh, images. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not that one. Oh, this one not that is <laughs> a way off anyway i'd have a couple like a couple of them just the eyes yeah i don't know let me know uh, what you think i might just have the just the eyes alone uh, four or five uh, of them in a row and see how we go and we need something for this one as well so once it's available or if you're watching this uh, video you have the you would know what the links are but eventually i'll um yeah be some of the videos i'm editing adding a uh, more um videos from the live stream so stay tuned and let me know if there's any questions or if you have if you've checked the, any of the other tools on bionicchaos.com do let me know how you went and what what ads did you get? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was thinking there could be an option uh, to uh, have the website here on Bionic Cloud. You could have a version of it with no advertisement if you like. So do, but do contact me for that. We could uh, sort you out. Or some custom tools uh, for your specific uh, data sets or applications. We can do that as well. See you in a bit. Bye. So like this random ads for insurance and stuff. You want more relevant uh, advertisements? Yeah, universities, uh, medical device uh, companies. Uh, Neuralink. How about Neuralink? Do they need some <laughs> ad placement? I don't think so. Bye.